The European Union failed to approve a $54 billion aid package last night. It was rejected after Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban blocked the vote. This comes after the leaders agreed to officially begin negotiations for Ukraine to join the European Union. BBC reporter Sofia Betiza joins us now from Brussels. Uh, where do things stand uh, for aid to get to Ukraine at this hour, Sofia? Well, Doug, things are not looking good at the moment. As you just mentioned, after hours of negotiations here in Brussels, EU leaders have failed to agree on the next aid package for Ukraine. Now, that aid package would have delivered 50 billion euros to Kyiv and would have make, made sure that Ukraine is funded for the next four years. But there was quite a lot of diplomatic drama behind the scenes here in Brussels, and that's all because of one man. The Hungarian Prime Minister, Viktor Orban, was very much against sending more money to Kyiv. Now, Mr. Orban is is perceived as one of um, Vladimir Putin's closest allies in Europe. In fact, he's the only EU leader who has met with Putin face to face in the past year. So he basically last night decided to use his veto powers to block the money for Kyiv. And he said this, he said he'd done this because he thinks that the EU strategy on Ukraine is not working and that Ukraine is so far not winning the war. Now, I, I, you know, President Zelensky was desperate to get that money. He um, he very much relies on aid from the EU and from the US. So all in all, quite a complicated week for Zelensky. He was in the US earlier this week trying to get more money, but he failed to get the green light because of a political deadlock in Washington, D.C. So if you take what happened in Washington earlier this week and what is happening here in Brussels today, it's quite a big setback for Ukraine. Uh, Sophia, thank you very much. So we want to talk a little bit more about this. Let's bring in former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, uh, William Taylor. Thank you so much for joining us again, sir. So let us talk about Hungary, the, the single vote that held up this aid. What is the relationship between the Hungarian president and President Vladimir Putin? Why did Hungary do this? Well, Emery, Sophia just described exactly correctly um, uh, about uh, Mr. Orban, uh, Prime Minister Orban, the Hungarian leader, who's the only one, as she pointed out, the only one uh, of the 27 nations who opposed uh, this assistance. So 26 out of 27 are all supportive. Um, 26 out of 27 were also all supportive of giving the, giving the Ukrainians the green light for European membership and beginning those negotiations. And they found a way, Emery, they found a way for Mr. Orban to be out of the room so that they could vote to allow that to proceed. I imagine they will find a way as well to, find, to, to, fund, this, to fund this assistance to Ukraine. But you're right that Orban is close to uh, Putin. Um, he has, has met with him. Uh, Orban has met with Putin, even though Putin has been indicted by the International Criminal Court um, for, uh, for war crimes, for abducting Ukrainian children. So he's an indicted war criminal, and Orban meets with him. So it's, it's hard to understand that one. If he's really European, uh, 26 out of 27 all support Ukraine, and he's supporting Putin. Ambassador uh, Putin, uh, who you just talked about, is looking at the disagreements happening in Washington and in the European Union for Ukrainian aid. Uh, he, he tends to use distractions to his benefit. So is this what he wants to see? Of course. Doug, you're exactly right. This, Putin loves to see problems for Ukraine. He knows that he has not been able to win on the battlefield. Uh, Putin has been frustrated by the Ukrainians. The Ukrainians, amazingly, against all odds, have pushed back, held back, and have defeated uh, Russia on many battlefields. So Putin looks for some other way. His only strategy, Doug, is to wait us out. His only strategy is to try to uh, keep the assistance from coming to Ukraine and waiting out until there's a, some political change somewhere that will take it, that he will try, Putin will try to take advantage of. 
Ambassador, as you know, I'd say probably about a month ago, a Ukrainian uh, general described the war as at a stalemate. Volodymyr Zelensky pushed back against that. He didn't like that characterization. But the truth of the matter is neither side has really made any significant gain in months. And we are heading into the depths of winter here. What is your assessment of the state of the war? So, Emory, I was uh, in, in Ukraine uh, in October and talked to that same general and also talked to President Zelensky while he was here this time. Um, and my sense is they're both right. That is, there is a deadlock on the ground um, in Ukraine. There's not a deadlock. And the Ukrainians are actually progressing, um, pushing the Russians back on the sea, on the Black Sea. They are moving, the Ukrainians are moving the Russians out of the western part of the Black Sea, which has enabled them to export grain and other things. So it's not a deadlock overall. Um, there is a deadlock uh, on the ground, but, but deadlock suggests that static is not static. Both sides are pushing against the other. Neither side is able to break through. So President Zelensky is right. Um, they're making progress. They've got the initiative. Uh, but General Zeluzhny is also right. There hasn't been big changes on the battlefield over the past several months. Former U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine, William Taylor Ambassador, thanks so much for joining us and for your time this morning.